In this segment, we're going to discuss the unique nutrient requirements during the flowering cycle. Uh, and so it's my understanding, Kyle, that there's major nutrients, there's, mic there's minor nutrients, and then there's micronutrients. Right. So let's start out with the major nutrients. Tell us what those are. Well, your major nutrients are the ones you see on the package, the NPK. Okay. Nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. All right. And now how do those work and how are they different than in the veg cycle? How do they work during the flowering cycle? Well, you're still going to need all three of them, just in a different proportion. Okay. Whereas during the veg cycle, you're high in nitrogen for most of your uh, leaf and branch and stem production. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, required for photosynthesis, you need a high nitrogen. Now we're switching to a high P, high phosphorus. Okay. And so you basically reverse the numbers. You have double the amount of phosphorus as you do in nitrogen. And the phosphorus effectively is what supports that flower development and flower production. Correct? Exactly. Exactly. While you still have uh, uh, growth going on in the plant, uh, the hormones are all switching over to flowering and you require a high phosphorus level along with an additional, additional potassium. Okay. But as you mentioned, the plant is still using a little bit of nitrogen through this phase as well, correct? Absolutely. And, and I use that as a marker for when I actually want to cut out the grow formula or the nitrogen. Okay. So as the plants uh, progress through their flowering cycle, at some point they're going to stop growing taller. Okay. and they're only going to be putting more flower weight on the plant. Once they stop growing, in other words, producing vegetative matter, that's usually when I cut out the nitrogen altogether. Okay, so what you're saying then is during the early phases of the flowering cycle is when you still have some nitrogen in that mix. It's not to the same proportions that you had during the veg cycle. It's been cut back. Sure. Okay, you've increased your phosphorus mm -hmm. uh, and potassium. Mm -hmm. All right, and you leave that veg, I mean, you leave that nitrogen in through that initial flowering cycle, what, through the, uh, through the stretch period? Exactly, it's usually, um, depending on the strain, it's gonna be for about three into four weeks, maybe, before the plant's gonna stop stretching. Gotcha. And, uh, and just like with any other living thing, when they're small and when they're babies, they don't eat as much. So just like the veg cycle food recipe is graduated and it gets larger as they get older, same thing with the flowering cycle. So your initial, your initial feeding is going to be what we call a transitional feeding, okay. which is going to be equal levels of nitrogen and phosphorus. Okay. And then it starts to edge up around the second to third week yes. of flowering. You're going to give it that heavy boost of phosphorus yes. and begin to lower the nitrogen a little bit until it finally uh, stops growing. And all you have left is flowering growth where you almost all but eliminate the nitrogen. Okay, so about how many weeks into flowering is that? You, see, you figure you cut out the nitrogen entirely? About four weeks, about halfway through flowering. Right as you enter the midway mark is when you can consider uh, substantially reducing and then finally cutting out the nitrogen. And now the reason why this, that there isn't a, a true definitive cutoff is because it's kind of genetic specific too, isn't it? Yes, it's very genetic specific. Um, your indica varieties are going to finish much faster your sativa varieties are going to finish much later, mm -hmm. therefore, and they're going to grow much larger. Yep. So uh, it's basically uh, variety dependent. So once the plants have finished their stretch, we can cut out the nitrogen entirely. And I imagine it's at that point that those other two uh, major nutrients really become to play their role in the process, the phosphorus and the potassium. Right? Sure. I wouldn't cut the nitrogen out completely okay. unless you're a really short cycle variety. All right. Um, maybe cut it down by 75, 80%. Okay. Just leave a couple of, uh, couple of milliliters per gallon left in there to keep everything humming along. Because it's more about the ratio of nitrogen to phosphorus, potassium. It's the nutrient ratio that keeps the plant humming. Excellent. So, uh, and so then what, ratio, it, what ratio do you think would be most proper? you know, in the, in the early part of the flowering cycle as opposed to, to later on? Uh, to put some numbers on it, I would say that uh, there's a transition formula, okay. a transition recipe, which is usually... Transitioning from veg from to flower. veg to flowering, which is about equal parts of uh, nitrogen and phosphorus. Mm -hmm. You know, so to put it into perspective, it would be like a, a 10 milliliter, 10 milliliter, 5. Okay. Grow, blues, CalMag. Good. Um, as we move later in through the flowering. As you move later, the phosphorus becomes twice the level of the nitrogen. So you would do like a 5-10 or a 7-15 grow bloom formula. 
Okay. And you'd carry that through the, the major uh, proportion of the flowering cycle. And it's only about three quarters of the way through is where you, this is, this is kind of the key, is to know when you can cut out the nitrogen completely because excess nitrogen in the plant, as you know, causes a bitter taste at the end, extra, chlor extra chlorophyll doesn't bleed out of that the plant. green, grassy, lawn clippings kind of. Exactly, yeah. so right around, um, for an indica, the end of the sixth to the beginning of the seventh week, cut out all nitrogen. For sativas, maybe the end of the seventh to the end of the eighth week, cut out all nitrogen and finish with just your phosphorus and your potassium. Excellent, all right, so that covers the majors. Uh, in addition to the majors, there's some secondary nutrients that also play a very important role through the flowering process, right? Absolutely. Uh, nutrients such as calcium, magnesium, sulfur. Sure. Uh, could you touch a little on, on the role that each of these uh, nutrients plays? Again, it's the balance of nutrients that's really, really important. Okay. Um, not necessarily the, uh, the strength or the, uh, the percentage uh, of the nutrients. Okay. So uh, usually CalMag is going to be around 200 to 250 parts per million mm -hmm. of your overall formula. Yep. And uh, that carries right through, right about to the same point where you would cut out the nitrogen. So when you identify the place to cut out the nitrogen, that's about when I cut all of my micros and my, my secondary nutrients in half. Ah, interesting. Because the plant is starting to acquiesce. It's going down the other side of the hill. It's, so the, it's, 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 it's finishing its life cycle. The growth it's cycle is slowing down. It's actually beginning to cannibalize itself a little bit, using up the nutrients that are actually residing within the plant, right? Exactly. And that's really important in order to get finishing color at the end um, and to use up all that extra, extra nitrogen and chlorophyll so that you have a tasty, uh, sweet, ripened product at the end. Yeah, because you know, in an ideal situation, that, that remaining nitrogen has been used up Okay, the chlorophyll has begun to lighten, the, the, the leaves are beginning to yellow, all the way through, not just those huge big fan leaves, but all the way through the tops of the flowers here. Right. It's, it's nice to start to see some, some yellowing in that late flowering phase. You wanna start just you know, working out that, that, that nitrogen that's in there, you know? And then that, to take that, that it a chlorophyll. step, and to take it one step further is, is if you do that properly, and you get that yellowing uh, in the late flowering, that tends to lead to the fluorescing of the fall colors. And most plants left outside in nature will experience some kind of fall colors, purples and reds and blues and, and different shades of green and yellow. And that won't happen if you don't get the bleeding of the nitrogen in the beginning. You'll just end up with necrosis at the end. If you cut out the nitrogen at the right time and ultimately cut out the food and start giving plain water for the last few weeks of flowering, that's when you get to see those beautiful fall colors. And uh, the plants will actually cannibalize themselves and swell up really nice with the absence of all that extra nitrogen. 